in conversation with Adam Deal Seal. Adam Deal Seal is an author from West Morlesey in Surrey, United Kingdom. At the age of five, he was diagnosed with dyslexia and could not read or write until he was 11. He discovered his passion of reading and writing after discovering a new book series called Goosebumps. His book, Goodbye Mother Beer, was nominated and shortlisted for the Right Blind Book Award 2020, while his short story collection, Cynic Star Short, was nominated in 2023. Away from the decks, Adam enjoys walking, nature, playing his guitar, solving and movies, and has one acting credit for the film Next Door, directed by Matt Shan. Adam often attends book events, signings, and fair and enjoys meeting his young readers and tell them that nothing should stop them from following their dreams. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's my utmost pleasure and joy to offer the show today, Adam Deal Seal. How are you doing, Adam? Hi, Peter. I'm very, uh, very happy and honored to be on your show. Yeah, I'm excited too to have you on the show today. Pretty much interesting. We're going to be having a conversation around your writing. So, Adam, could you tell us about your book, Good Night, Mr. Moon? How does this book come about? What inspired you to write Goodbye, Mr. Moon? And also, what piqued your interest in the genre of children's literature? Well, Good Night, Mr. Moon is a bedtime story which I kind of like came up with when I was, uh, when I was actually, uh, at the time, I was... Uh, writing a monster book and mm. i decided to do kind of like a bedtime fantasy for ch mm. or children to be able to read at night it is a completely different book mm. compared to my uh, others because uh not only does the text rhyme along quite smoothly but the illustrations were done all by hand to make it a old-fashioned feel to the book mm. wow i love the sound of it sounds quite amazing to me and i'd like to ask you what piqued your interest in the genre of children's literature why should this genre of all others well when i was young obviously i was born with it where i was dyslexic i was not able to uh, read picture books not like my mum and sister could and i had to uh, read made the stories myself what mm. i usually do i usually go through books like uh not now bernard and other picture books i had at the time oh. and i usually look at the pictures and i usually create my own stories from them mm. and uh when i started learning to read for myself i um uh, i decided that i wanted to do picture books so um other children can get enjoyment out of them just like how i used to by looking at the pictures oh. and that was one of the reasons i wanted to do a child uh to do children's books interesting yeah i love the sound of that sounds like an amazing way to come into a genre sounds quite lovely to me and now adam you also have another title in the name of goodbye mother beer faraday beer for readers who haven't read that yet and without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what I'd expect picking up Goodbye Mother Bear? Yes, uh, Goodbye Mother Bear has to be one of my most challenging books to oh. create. It was a, yeah, it, I, I took a chance because of the theme of the book, of what it was about, of what happens mm. to the little bear and the journey, what young children will follow him on but goodbye mother bear just uh, look into the themes of uh, of grief obviously faraday bear who the book focuses on he loses his mum and it's his journey through the grief pro process oh. and about uh how his his friends rally around and uh, help him to come to terms it it was a big it was a big book to uh, to write. There was a lot of research I had to do on it. It was a uh, and a lot of editing mm. I had to do. 
but it was a book that I really am proud of. I did take a chance of, of writing it, but I wanted wow. not only for the children to read about Faraday Bear for the One Adventure, but I wanted to do a book series mm. that focuses on him, so I follow his adventure through, uh, through the other books that I am planning on releasing with him in. in. Mm. Wow, that sounds quite lovely to me, really. And if you have a copy there, I'd love you to show it to the camera, just so we can yeah, see I, what it looks like. I have. This is Goodbye Mother. Beautiful. Goodbye Mother Bear. It was, uh, obviously, as you mentioned before, it was nominated and shortlisted for an award, which I was absolutely thrilled beyond words about. And um, I am very, very proud. Ian, my illustrator, did absolute did a brilliant job on the pictures as you can wow. see he's done an amazing job what he's done and uh obviously stefan stephanie my designer she did a fantastic job and uh as i said earlier i wanted to continue his adventure i did not want him to stop at the end of book one yeah. and i'm pleased to say that book number two is also out and as you can see ian has done another Fantastic job on it, and wow. uh, this one follows his his friend his uh his friendship with all of his friends. Interesting. And if you have good night, Mister Moon, there would you love to shut the camera as well? Yep, this is good night, Mister yeah, Moon. That's a fossil. Interesting. And um, the illustrations was done by a um, lady called Wendy Trinder, and she did everything by hand. Oh. You can see the pictures may not be the, one of the clearest on the screen, but Just... they were literally all done by hand. And she has wow. done a, an amazing job on it all. Interesting. Love the sound of it. Thank you for showing to the camera. And now you also have another title in the name of The Big and the Little Monster Go on a Picnic. And I want to commend your quite a lot of amazing titles, really. Sounds quite amazing to me. And now, would you like to tell us briefly about what inspired the making of The Big and the Little Monsters Go on a Picnic? Uh, yes. Um, the Big and Little Monster is another book series I've, I did. And actually, oh. um, it was one of the first stories that I, I actually... Uh, put down on paper I was uh, 12 years old when I first wrote the wow. first book wow. and uh, I decided to do a few uh, to do a few more adventures with them and book number three is where I go on a picnic centers mm. around I can't a serious topic that's close to my heart and that is to do wow. with littering I mean at the moment yes at the moment it's uh it's quite a big deal, especially in uh, England, because uh, I often go to the park or somewhere mm. and there's always Coke cans or beer bottles, all that laying around. And uh, <laughs> like you say, it just literally went out. Do you want me to start again and all that? Okay, mm. here we go. <laughs> yeah, um, literate. Littering is a very big deal at the moment, and it's something that I I don't like. I don't like going to the park and finding all the all this oh. litter everywhere, and it is a danger to the animals. As you were uh, mentioned in in the intro, I'm a nature lover, and I I love mm, yeah. taking walks out in the countryside, and uh, and I do hate seeing it. So uh, when I so when I decided to do a new monster book, I decided to do uh, one where I encounter, where I go to a nice, to have a nice picnic, but it doesn't turn out that well that way. Wow. That's amazing, really. I love the sound of that. And now, Adam, I'm curious to know if you experienced any challenges while writing all those books. If there is any, could you share what us what challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame it? Well, yeah, look, one of the big, biggest challenges I find is literally putting the, the word on paper, pen on mm. paper. That is a huge challenge for me because I'm not one of perfect spellers. Sometimes my imagination can wander off. Mm. But as soon as I get the story structured on the page and then I fill it out a bit, and obviously I start that editing, 
And yeah. um, again, that can be a, a bit of a nightmare for any author because we do get a bit coder, right? And sometimes with the editing, we do have to take Absolutely. out parts that we, uh, we are close with. And yeah. uh, by the end of the day, that's one of my challenges. And as soon as I send it off to my editor and he sends it back and uh, gives me the thumbs up, then I'm quite pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sound of that. Gives him a thumbs up, and I'm quite pleased. Quite lovely to know, really. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Now, apart from the titles I've mentioned uh, thus far, do you have any other works you've altered or maybe currently working on? Uh, yes. The last uh, book, a collection of um, short stories that take me back oh. to my uh, goosebump days, uh, like I've been very well received, especially in America, and I know there have been uh, people asking if I'm going to do any more. And at the moment, I'm kind of putting uh, a short story collection together. That's for kind of like middle grade uh, children. For picture books, I am doing some more um, at the moment. I'm doing a brand new Fair Day Bear book, and I'm also uh, doing a... Uh, Another one, which I'm wow. currently getting illustrated at the moment. Hmm. Interesting. I love the sound of that. And I hope that goes on successfully. Oh, thank you. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? Are there any challenges you've encountered ever since we got published? Yes. I mean, I think every author will feel it's a challenge yeah i mean in the i mean in the uk and other countries there are options you can go you can either go through a publisher you can uh, go through self-publishing or you can go through hybrid publishing mm. um so it's always a challenging on do it of doing that of selecting plus it's getting your getting your books out into print is easy but getting them out into the hands of the readers that is so uh, really challenging and yeah. no matter what path you go through mm. it's still a challenge if you go for a big publisher the author will still need to uh will still need to sell their books to uh to the children or to parents or to schools mm. to get themselves to get themselves up so that is a huge challenge, uh, what Absolutely. every author faces. Yeah, I understand, you know, writing it, well, we understand that writing sometimes can be very difficult, but then to some it might sound like a simplex part of the job. But the actual job, you know, people get to know about the writing itself. People get to know that, okay, a book like this exists. Yeah, that seems to be the most important side of the business side of writing, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And now, is there anything that you'd love to share with the viewers about your books that we did not mention in this interview and you'd love the viewers to know? Oh, uh, yes. I mean, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce one of my books. This is The Snowman's Nose. It was, mm -hmm. it was uh, this book came about as it was supposed to have been a one-off school book when Ooh. I was doing a school fair and I actually had my niece Emily who did the illustrations and she was only eight years old at the time and wow. uh, this actually uh, was the sales have been very has been fantastic for this book I think a lot of parents teachers and children are just drawn to the picture because of the style mm. and no matter all year round, even during the height of the summer, I often sell quite a few copies to this book. Wow. And that's been quite amazing. But my uh, niece, she has autism, autism as it is. She was a bit um, a bit shy about doing the illustrations because wow. she didn't know what they would turn out like. So I just told her, just go for it. You've got nothing to lose. And uh, mm. I think as it is, I have turned out pretty pretty good and there's been a lot of good feedback about the book and i'm quite uh, proud of the book and i'm quite proud of my niece for doing it and i hope 
encourages other children just to, mm. you know, follow their dreams and just do, do, do it. Because at the end of the day, I've got nothing to lose. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ada. I love the sound of it. Sounds quite amazing to me. And now as a published author, what sort of advice do you offer other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? And you may want to give this idea or her advice in the genre of children's literature, you know? Okay, yes. I mean, obviously, one of the biggest advice most upcoming authors always hear and always receive is never give up. Yeah. That's one of the biggest advice that I can give. The next advice I can give is do a lot of research. No matter what type of book you're doing, whether it's a children's picture book or a middle grade book or an adult novel, always do your research. Yeah. This is not just about writing the book, sending it up to a publisher, getting a deal and sitting back and giving up and giving up your full time job, sitting back and just writing and earning loads of money. It's not like that, sadly. <laughs> in, re in, in reality, it's a lot tougher. You've got to go out there. You've got to find sell your book. You go find the correct group of, of readers who Absolutely. like your book. And it is a lot it is a challenging it's not easy but once you get there once you start doing it mm. it's something you you will like i've i've been doing this for a few years now and i'm i'm still learning stuff every day i think everybody does yeah it's it's a fantastic job and i it's something i love doing mm. that's great thank you so much for your advice appreciate it and i hope viewers would love to utilize it. Now, Adam, in case we have some viewers who are currently watching this interview, I would love to get a copy of any of your books and what platform are they available on for purchase? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, if anyone wants a signed, a signed uh, or personalized copy of my book, like an obviously um, order through my uh, website, I I got my own website. It's easy to find on Google. I uh, sell and ship anywhere, and uh, obviously I uh, sign and personalize any books to any children or anyone who wants their name in it. Mm. I do sell obviously through Amazon, one of the biggest platforms, or in the UK, people can order them through independent bookshops or through uh, shops like Waterstones. Interesting. And I left a link in the description part of this interview where interested viewers can get a copy of Adam D. Silk's books directly on Amazon and also on other platforms. So thank you so much, Adam, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome having this conversation with you. Oh, no. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've absolutely loved I've, I've loved to be in here. So, you know, thank you very much. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well.